urban and peri-urban agriculture is already much larger than most of us think. There are about 800 million people involved already. It's huge. And I, I know that in cities, for example, in the U.S. where I come from, the city of Detroit that was a manufacturing center and then it was just wiped out and incredibly uh, struck by poverty, that there, there have been estimates that the abandoned lots could provide virtually all the vegetable needs of the population. And so there's a big emphasis there about how do we take advantage of that. And one of the great changes in my country in the last 25 years is the emergence of community-supported agriculture, where my family buys in to the farm share in the beginning of the season so that the farmer doesn't have to go to the bank and pay a high interest, but can have the actual eaters helping to fund the farm. But it is a huge cultural breakthrough as well as this actual supply because then the little children come out with us and they you know, experience the farm and build a consciousness of where the food comes from. And that is just growing so fast in this country as well as farmer's markets created. Uh, farmer's markets in the U.S. were in most states just not even allowed uh, in, in, you know, 30 years ago. And now they're growing last year at 17% in one year. There are over 7,000 of them in the U.S. now. So I think that this is a critical piece because people know, know, know that our food system is not working for them. The illness certainly in the U.S. is so evident, the food-related illnesses. And so this gives, um, for all the different angles of people who, you know, who, um, who just want to really have access to healthier food, and know that it's going to be directly supplied by their neighbors, in a sense. It, it, it really begins to shift the understanding of the food system altogether.